Hi, I'm Bodie Miller of the U.S. Ski Team. And I'm Phil McNichol, head men's coach of the U.S. Ski Team, and welcome to Sports School. In this video, we're going to show you some fundamentals that will take you from an advanced intermediate to an expert skier. The first segment we're going to cover today is pole planting. And pole planting meaning not just to use to get from your car to the chairlift, but pole planting as it relates to an expert skier. The pole plant is one of those elements of skiing that applies just as easily to moguls, powder, um, free skiing around as it does directly to my racing. The first element in pole planting we're going to talk about is the timing of the pole plant. And the timing occurs at the completion of one turn as you're releasing and moving into the next. So it's finish the turn, extend, release, and plant. It's the very first movement to the transition of the new edge. So a lot of people seem to think about that pole plant as the end of one turn. Um, I think it's a much more healthy thought process. Anyway, it helps, it helps a lot of beginners, a lot of intermediates to think of it as the very first part of your turn. It's the part that initiates your body going down the hill, gets you into a solid position so that when you make the transition to the new edge, you're able to build pressure quickly and move inside, as opposed to having it be the end of the turn before, and then you have to start the movement new. This is the very first step into the new turn. The next element is that movement to get up in a line that we talked about in our pole plant. When you finish one turn, and you extend and reach for your pole plant to start your next turn, that creates the alignment up over your skis that are going to get you to the soft shovel when you put it on edge that will allow the ski to start to carve. Now, the reason that you need to do this is not just for flow and movement, but now as we talk about carving, you have to stand on the right part of the ski when you first put it on edge. And that requires this movement that you made with the pole to release and move up into an aligned position at the exit of the turn. Now I'm aligned, and now when I put this ski on edge, I can actually use the soft part of the ski, the shovel, and that's going to bend into an arc, and it's going to get us into the carve. And this is really important as we move through the next couple steps in building out carve skiing. As you remember, the pole plant was used to be timed at the end of the turn as you release. It's also used to create movement and pull you up into an extended position aligned over your feet. The next element in carving is the use of the ankles. You need to have the ankles flexed, close down that ankle joint to bring the hips up into a place where you can stay forward up into the driver's seat and keep the skis carving all the way through the turn. One of the things that's uh, pretty key about the ankle flexion is the forward lean of your boots. It's something that the racers spend a lot of time figuring that out is exactly the angle that you need to get on your ski and in your boot so that you can have that pressure on the front of the boot all the time if you need it, down, especially down steep pitches. Having that ankle driving is what starts the ski carving as well as you keep the pressure on and the right part of the turn and allow you to carve clean. For me, this is, uh, this is a key point because whether I'm working with a, uh, the best skier in the world or I'm just out trying to help my mom get down the slope, what typically you'll see is the hips come back, the ankles and the legs are straight up out of the boot putting all the weight to the tail. The ski gets overloaded, it breaks loose, it does not carve anymore, it skids. So just getting the hips up, driving the knees forward is an amazing component to keep the skis carving. One of the key aspects of that also is the fitness element. When you're up over your skis and you've got that fr the pressure on the, on the front of the boot, on your shin, and your ankle's in a good flex position, you're using your skeleton to support the forces that are created. As soon as you get back and your, sh your shin is coming up out of the boot really straight, all the pressure's on your quads, and you'll, you just won't last. If you want to ski all day and, and be out there ripping turns, you've got to get up onto the front of the boot. In carving, we discuss the element of ankle flexion. And as you can see here in Bodhi skiing, he has nice ankle flexion in regards to the angle of his shin in relationship to the surface of the ski. That angle is closed down, the knee is driven forward. In this position, he's bringing pressure right through to the forebody of the ski. He does it early in the turn, which creates bending off the shovel of the ski, creating early carving, and then again holds this position and drives in this position through the turn, which maintains power to the edge and balance throughout the entire turn. It's going to be those times when you guys are stuck out in the crud field the way we are now. It's uh, been a long powder day and everyone skied it out uh, way too many times. When you, skate your, when you get yourself stuck in a crud field like this one, you got to focus on controlling the speed. If you run down the fall line, even just for 20 or 30 yards, 
you get going too fast. And in this crud, there's no telling what's underneath the surface. You get your edges caught, you get locked up, and this is a serious area for injury. So for controlling that speed, you almost need to be working on up on waiting type of turn. You need to have a lot of, a lot of balance and you need to have a lot of focus on staying up on the front of your skis to make that turn sharp and quick to control your speed. If you start getting back, you can easily get caught on the tails, start running down the fall line, and once you get up to speed, there's no choice but to do the banana roll bail. And again, getting back to the fundamentals. Balance, balance, balance. We've talked about keeping our ankles flexed, and using our pole plant to promote flexion and extension. And in the crud, this extension move is actually exaggerated. As Bodhi said, it's almost a hop turn because the skis tend to break through the crud. You don't know what's underneath there. You start to find one ski going one direction, another ski going another direction, and that's gonna spell disaster.